Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dr. Glenn Vo, and I am super excited to have my guest today on the podcast. Dr. Avi Weisvogel. Avi, what's up? Oh, everything's good here, Glenn. I am so excited to be here. I've been uh, listening to your stuff for a long time, so excited to be on this end of it. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. And you know, I, I wanted to bring you on because here's the thing. I mean, there is so many companies. There are so many instructors. There's so many organizations helping helping dentists bring in, bring in sleep into their practice. But here's the thing. I've heard as many as there is a lot of success stories. I've heard probably double the amount of people saying, hey, I can't implement this. Hey, I bought all this equipment, all these different things. And so when you reached out, I was super excited because you know, you're know you you're the guy behind the International Academy of Sleep. You've been doing this in your own practice. You trained so many different doctors and, and helped them implement sleep dentistry into their practice. But here's the thing. I'm just going to be upfront and we're just going to dive right into it because that's the, well, that's the big on. elephant in the room. People are like, yeah, you know, it sounds good in theory. And yes, I know it's helping people, but man, I can't get this to work in my practice. I've heard all these stories that other people can't do it. So let's just, Avi, let's just dive right let's in. Let's jump in here, Glenn. This let's is just exactly jump in right we, in. So, so, so again, exactly what, what we got to go over. So let's talk about that. I mean, again, like why can't these people, you know, these other doctors, our fellow dentists, why can't they get this going in their practice? What's the biggest problems? So let, let's go over it. I mean, in general, you said it. I mean, there's a hundred sleep courses out there. Yeah. You know, hey, why go to this one? You know, when I started, I started sleep right out of school. Like I, I graduated from NYU in 1998 and did a residency for a year. I saw my first sleep patient three days into it. Now, not I, I knew nothing about sleep, by the way, other than a weekend course. I took a weekend course did what the guy told me to do back in 1999, treated this patient, had no clue what I was doing. Yeah, you know, but I did the procedure essentially as two night guards that I put in on the patient. She came in two weeks later and said, well, I have no clue what this thing does, but it just changed my life. I don't know how I could repay you for this. I said, well, you know, I don't think you need to repay me. Let's get this covered by your insurance. I cost me 300 bucks at the time. I got reimbursed 3,500. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Let me make sure I know, I know how to do more of these. The next patient I saw was about eight months later. And the next patient I saw maybe a year after that, because there really weren't patients coming out. So here's what's crazy about it. Every course that you're talking about, I think they're the same course that I took in 1998, which is here's the science, learn sleep apnea, right? You've seen the ads, learn sleep apnea and add $250,000, learn sleep apnea and there's patients galore. While there may be all these patients galore, how do you get them? How do they come into your office? And once they do, how do you get paid for them? So that's where people tend to fail is on those pieces of it. Well, you know, and again, that's, that's the biggest thing there, right? It's like, okay, first of all, I mean, where's all these patients, you know, they should be banging out. And let's say you go through your whole, you know, people say, a lot of these gurus will say, well, the patients are in your practice. Okay. So we do the screening, all that. That's great. So we get that people understand they, they want it. And then they're like, well, okay, how am I going to pay for this? Oh, well, we can yeah. get medical and et cetera, et cetera. Right. And to me, whenever people talk about getting paid by medical, that's like kind of like this unicorn concept, right? It like is. it's like it, 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 you hear about it, but you've never seen it work. Right. And so let's just address that because again, people are let's, listening. They're like, let's well, go to it specifically. I mean, think about it, right. You graduated from dental school. I graduated from dental school. When we opened up our practices and we build dental insurance, it's pretty easy right? But especially nowadays, you know, when I first started, I had to fill them out by hand and send them in until I got dentures. <laughs> and then we hit a little batch. I'm like, wow, this is great. But even, you know, crowns, you submit, you got paid. Endo, you submit, you got paid. Certainly the basics, you always get paid. You know, maybe some insurances make it a little more difficult. Medical insurance, on the other hand, even if you know specifically how to fill out a medical insurance form and you fill it out for an oral appliance, it's like goes to the auto reject pile right? Dentists billing on medical insurance. Here's a little newsflash. Medical insurances do not want to pay dentists. While they can bill medical insurance, they're not looking to make it easy for you. So if you come back from a course and you say, well, I did an appliance on this patient, they needed it, or they even asked for it. I submitted to insurance and 
nothing happened. I didn't get paid or I got rejected. And then I said, ah, forget it. You know, too hard. I don't know this world. So while dental insurance is pretty straightforward and simple, the medical insurance world is more complex. And when it comes to sleep, they're going to make it work for it. So unless you know the whole process behind the scenes, chances are they'll keep getting rejected. You want to hear the most frequent story I hear? I went to a sleep course, came back, treated three patients, got paid for none, quit. I hear that one all the time. <laughs> no, it, it, again, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I hear that all the time. And, you know, there's all these other companies too, right? There's companies that they, the reason why they exist is because they help us get paid through medical. And even with those companies, with their sole existence is to help you get paid through medical insurance. I even hear people saying that doesn't even work for me. It doesn't even yeah, work. It's for hard. Me. So, so again, let's just, let's just dive right into it because, again, this is a, a touchy subject for, for so many people because we see the benefit. We yeah. want to do it, right? Like, we want to diversify our skill set. You know, again, you know, if you've been practicing a while, what Dennis says, you know what? I can't wait to do some more class twos. No, you want to upgrade zero, your skills. Zero of them. You know, you want to upgrade your skills. You want to do all these. So, so I'll be with, with, you know, your courses and your organization. And again, I, I've seen, I know some of the dentists that have gone through your program. Some friends down in Austin have gone through your program and they have just, again, they created practices just for helping these type of patients out. But, you know, what, is it trial and error? Like, what do you guys so have that no other course it. has, you know? You just touched on it. One of the, uh, a huge mistake people make, sleep is not something you can add just as a procedure, Right. Uh, Glenn Vogt dentist doing an appliance does not get paid the same way uh, sleep company X gets paid for it. Oh. Right? So uh, this was a fluke, by the way. I was a dentist doing appliances out of my practice, and it became more difficult to get paid as time went along. I decided to go into sleep full time. I created what's called a DME company. DME stands for durable medical equipment, and oral appliance is a piece of durable medical equipment. I did the same exact procedure, same location out of my dental office, just as a different company, a new DME company, and all of a sudden started getting paid double, triple, even quadruple what I was getting paid as a dentist doing the same procedure. So it looked like medical insurances were more likely to pay you as a separate company, a DME company, rather than just as an add-on to your practice. You know, I love fascinating that. stuff that I found out by a fluke, to tell you the truth. Well, here's the thing, but the thing is, is that you've done it. And your students and also everyone that's in the organization has done it. Let's talk about this. You know, once you learn the strategy, and again, I tell people it's all about the strategy, right? Yes, you, you got you to gotta have the desire. You know, you got to have a little bit of grit, but you can have all the grit in the world. You can work as hard as you want. But if you don't know what you're doing, then it, you're, you're just going to just spin your wheels. So talk about some of the like success stories, right? Well, and also... And also, let's just talk about this. How difficult is it, right? Because again, you know, people are like, okay, well, can I just go in there and just, you know, watch a couple of videos and do it? Let's, 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 just, let's just lay it out there. There's going to be a little bit of work there, but it can be done. So talk about that. First part, procedure is a piece of cake, right? We knew how to do this procedure in our junior year of dental school. You know, took an impression, took impression, a bite right? registration, piece of cake. <laughs> Why is it so hard then? You know, you have to know the whole process behind it. I think it was just in dental town and it said the, the biggest problem, it said, Hey, why don't you implement sleep in your practice? And everyone said medical billing. I think it was 54%. So the hardest part is medical billing. Not that it's the hardest part, but medical billing won't just pay you unless you understand the process. You have to understand the whole process. So how many patients come into your office saying, Hey, Dr. Vo, uh, can you make me a sleep appliance? Right? It doesn't happen that often. It may happen on occasion. The more likely is you go to a course and you come back and you tell a patient they need this. So, hey, you know, I just went to a sleep course and you're not going to believe this, but people stop breathing in their sleep and these appliances that we make for them can save their life. And the most common response from a patient is, hey, you know, can we just clean my teeth over here? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that this is important, <laughs> but can we just concentrate on the teeth? That's what I'm here for. So already we're stepping out of our comfort zone here and selling something that really isn't technically a dental procedure. And it's not certainly not why patients are there. The patients are coming in. They trust you to look at their teeth, make sure the teeth are healthy, fix teeth in any single way you can, even things such as cosmetics teeth related, right? Ortho teeth related implants, obviously teeth related. Sleep 
Not so much. It just happens to be an appliance that a dentist can make that goes over your teeth. So we're fighting against that part to begin with. But let's say you're past that, right? Let's say you have motivated patients who know and understand this. You got to know the process. And this was a, a, a big learning curve for me. So I, I was very into marketing back in my dental days of doing implants of full mouth rehabs. I did a ton of them and I really got into the marketing. Hey, if I put this marketing piece out, what's my ROI? What am I looking at? Am I getting a four, one, five, one on this? And what I found was there was a lot of patients that were unhappy with their mouth, unhappy with their smile. And they were coming to me as the expert when they came to me for sleep, because I said, you know what, if I could do this for implants, why couldn't I do it for sleep? I mean, I'm, this is a no brainer that one changes or saves their life. The other one, hey, we're going to fix their function, maybe give them a better smile. It should be an easy sale in comparison. I had 100 patients come in the first month I did sleep advertising. I got to treat one or two, right? What happens when a patient comes in and says, I have a sleep issue? If you're following the procedure the correct way, the first thing you have to do when a patient says this is send them out to a physician. So imagine you start advertising and the first thing you have to do is send them out to a physician. Yeah. It's not exactly something that's going to be easy unless you know how to control that process. You know, and I think that's really, really important to, to understand because again, there's different sleep courses, right? There's the, the weekend sleep course, right? There's one that you do it for a few months. There's some that go to a whole year, but at the end of the day, if you can't get paid for doing these procedures, then it's kind of like, okay, I learned it. It's really cool. Maybe I'll do it for, for my spouse or for my kids. And that's it. And it just ends up being like just a waste of time. But another big thing that I've heard too, is that there's other sleep courses where they're like, okay, you got to buy all this equipment before you can get started. Yeah. Avi, and, you, and that's a hard thing there? to accept, right? Yeah. Hey, listen, we, we never go out of our way to, to slam anyone in these places, but let's face the facts on it. Equipment's not going to help you get patients. Equipment's not going to help you get paid. Software right. is not going to help you get patients. Software is not going to help you get paid, right? There's all these little sales that go into it. If you think about the difference between the typical sleep course that's out there today versus the one I took in 1998, the only difference is what's the sale attached to it, right? Here's a typical sleep course. Have you taken one, by the way, Glenn? I have, yeah. I've actually taken several. Taken right, several. So, so again, I'm, I'm somebody who's coming through, who's faced these issues as well and, and try to implement it in my practice. And again, so many people hear that. And, and it's I feel like it's just it's such a shame because this is something that we should be offering our patients, but also it's a great way to kind of grow your practice and really help more people. And it's yeah. just, unfortunately... There's a lot of miscommunication. There's a lot of misinformation out there, but also the strategy hasn't been right for everyone. And that's why I was so excited to bring you on here. But yes, is, I've, I've gone, I've done a couple of courses. So tell me, this is your course. I, I wasn't, I don't even know which one you went to, but here is your course. It was a day, day and a half of the science behind sleep, right? Here's what sleep apnea is. Here's where the patient has a problem. Here's what happens when they stop breathing. Here's the effect it has on their health. Now here's the appliance. And here's why this appliance works, right? We, we all know the philosophy behind CPR, right? You listen, no breath, bring the chin up and forward. Now we can get air in. So, right, if we bring the chin up and forward and the airway is open. That was every course I took for at least a day and a half. And then that last half of the day was some sale that went with it. Could have been software, could have been a specific appliance, could have been equipment. It could be anything that comes with it. But in the end, what does it really do for you? If you know the science, and you then buy something to go with it, and you don't have a way of, A, getting your own source of patients, because even your patients, those are maybe difficult, and maybe you'll convert some, but if you have a 3,000 patient active, you know, 3,000 active patients in your hygiene, what are you going to treat? 20 of them, 30, you know, 40, 100, whatever that number is, it's going to be limited. If you want to grow this into a business where you see 20, 30, 40 every single month, you need that outside source of patients yeah. for part of this too. And so what we focus on or tend to focus on is, hey, how do I create the process behind it? How do I know how to do this? If I have a patient sent to me from Dr. X, or if I have a patient coming to me from a cold ad, where do I stick them into the process to know that I'm going to take this patient. They're going to go through every step. Every step, by the way, is going to be under my control, even if it's working with a physician. I say physicians who work with me. Every step stays under my control. Now we can kind of guide the patients appropriately. Not only that, 
once you know these steps, medical billing is not hard. Medical billing is not going to make it easy for you. But if you miss one of the, I call it 27 steps, you miss one of the 27 steps, insurance isn't going to pay you. And then you get frustrated and then it's all right, we're stuck. So it's not a matter of, hey, if only I had this piece of equipment, if only I had this right software, if only I had the correct billing company, that stuff really doesn't hold. It's more, if I knew what I was doing, I'm going to get paid on these so I mean, let me ask you this: So all the all the students have gone through your courses. That all the students that are that fellow dentists are in the organization. Yeah. What percentage would you say that bills to medical? Like what percentage? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Not, not, not even ninety nine. It's a hundred percent. They all bill medical because that is the business. I, and again, I wanted you to say that because here's the thing: some people may say, "Well, you know, medical that that's just some kind of unicorn, some kind of like you know again." We hear about it. No one's ever seen it work, right? That's one thing. And then some people may say, you know what? This works for certain practices because they just, they're fee for service. They just start to charge cash and I can't do that in my practice. So I wanted you to confirm that everyone, including yourself, bills to medical. And you just said it yourself. It's it's part of the whole process, right? It's, it's the way. I mean, you know, when I got into sleep, there was no real option when I started working with physicians of not billing insurance because you send a patient to a doctor or a doctor sends you a patient either way. And then it comes to the oral appliance and you say, yep, that'll be seven grand. And the patient's like, what are you? Out of your mind? Because they're not used to paying for medical, right? Yeah. What yeah. do we pay our doctors? 20 or 50 bucks for a copay, right? So it's not necessarily looked at as dentistry, where a $7,000 case in dentistry is not really that much. But on the other hand, if you walked into a doctor's office and your bill was $7,000, you would be like, oh my God, this is crazy, right? Let alone the fact that, hey, this is something that could change your life. But if you can't figure out that piece on how you're going to get it paid for by the insurance company... Doctors don't want to send your patients because then the patient says, hey, doc, you sent me to that guy. He's crazy. Yeah, he, he's, he's making me, me, seven he's making grand me pay out of thing. pocket. <laughs> yeah, charge me seven grand. You know, I don't have seven grand. Forget about the fact that I drive a uh, Tesla and go on uh, cruises, but I don't have seven grand to pay for this, right? It's uh, that it's there's no value really created. Right. There, so it's a tough sale. But on the medical end, that process for the medical insurance, if you know it, yeah, and it really is, by the way, exactly 27 steps of a patient coming in, the proper screening, going to a physician, an order of a home sleep test, and then sleep test, and then it goes from there. And if you have every step done and they're under your control, medical insurance isn't only doable, it's predictable. And that's yeah. what we're looking for in this, right? Well, again, you know, here, here's the thing. I mean, that's the the science behind it. It's so funny. When, when you were walking through the course, it's exactly you describe the two courses that I took. I mean, yeah. you exactly describe it because yeah, we learned the science behind it. And honestly, by now, most people probably know the science behind it. And then they go through everything. They actually go through the procedure and everything. And then the last 15 minutes, of, this is how you're going to get paid. What? Yeah. But really the last 15 minutes should have been the, a full day. That's It's that important because if you can't get paid, you can't do the procedure. And if you don't do the <laughs> procedure, then what's the point of even learning, right? So- Look, I'm going to ask you, so it's time for some more hard questions because, you know, Avi, like, you've, been, you've been practicing for a while. I've been practicing for a while. We know Dennis, right? We know Dennis. And this is the thing about Dennis. All, all we do is work with Dennis. So. Dentists, they always want to know the facts. Give oh, yeah. me the facts. Show me the data, all that. That's what dentists like to do, right? Like show me, yes. you know, show me the proof there. So look, let's let's play the game. Let's play the dental game, right? Because a bunch oh. of you guys are watching right now. You're probably wanting the proof. So look, Avi, let me ask you this. How many people if off the top of your head, have gone through your course and are now getting paid and seeing these patients, not just a couple of patients every yeah. quarter, talking about consistent patients every month. So off here's, the, top of your head, how many here's the reality. I mean, we have 200 members of IOS and the, the least successful see five to seven appliances per month, which is way more than the average job. I mean, hey, who can, yeah. for those who are watching, who can, who can, can use another seven cases, sleep cases a month. I mean, I can. Seven. Yeah, bring it on. Okay, come and, on. And that's a know? small impact, right? We are the guys who are obviously the cream of the crop. They do 100 or more every wow. single month, get paid for every single case from medical insurance. You almost uh, develop a street cred with the insurance company when you start uh, 
giving in cases, submitting cases at a higher amount. They're not looking to go through all this paperwork. And so they'll, they'll settle with you on a number beforehand where you know, hey, this is what the insurances are going to pay. You know, in New Jersey, our average was a little bit higher than it was across the country because we're, you know, I, I did this in 11 different states. New Jersey was just a really strong reimbursement area. And Cigna, uh, which was probably our lowest that we had an agreed upon amount was right around 4,000. And so we really were, were cranking at that point. But here's, you know, we spoke about this and, and we know what's out there, right? There are courses. We spoke about this. And at the beginning of my course, I'm going to ask this question. Hey, who wants a business where you're going to see 20 appliances or more every single month and get paid an average of $3,000 each? And you know, everybody raises their <laughs> yes, hands, to which I say, good, because if that's not the case, you're in the wrong place. You're, you know, you're going to sit through a weekend course and you're going to say, what am I doing here? Now, we go through the steps. The steps of what it takes to build a successful sleep business. It's not the typical things that a dentist does. So some of this is out of the comfort zone. And then you understand every piece that goes into it. And then I ask the same question. If a course starts on Friday, we go till Sunday at noon. And Sunday at 1130, I'll ask the question. Now that you know exactly what you have to do, how many of, of you are willing to do this? And now some of them raise their hand. So if we do a course with 15 dentists, we have small courses every four weeks three or four sign up for the full-on dental sleep MBA. And those 200 are, are the cream of the crop. You know, if you look at the top 10% of producers in dental sleep, I, most of them are coming through IOS and specifically going through the steps that it takes to build this program. Well, so there you go. I mean, for those who are watching right now, I mean, you're, you're, you know, if you're, if you're like the typical dentist, you're like, what's the proof? Give me the proof, right? Well, well there's the proof. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, and Avi just laid that out. And, and again, I'm going to ask Avi, and he's going to confirm it. You know, not everybody, not everybody can get into treating sleep, you know, sleep apnea in their practice. Not everybody can put the commitment in and do all that stuff. So can you just kind of elaborate on that, Avi? Because the thing is, sure. it's just like, it's just like people are like, hey, well, I want to, I want to start placing implants. I want to start doing all these big cases and stuff. That's great. But there's work that you need to put into it. Not everybody can do it. And this is the same thing. So I mean, let's just let's just let's just put that disclaimer out there and let's just be honest with everybody. You know, people are listening there like, yeah, I want those 30 new patients. I want sure. I want to be with the cream of the crop and have a hundred. I want to do all those things. And then once you see what the work is, and then maybe it's a, a few less hands up there, right? So I mean, let's just let's just be straight up with everyone. Talk about the commitment that's gonna be uh, behind this. It is a really commitment, right? It's a commitment. Yeah. And if I asked this group and I even asked you, Glenn, hey, how many people watching this can have a $5 million practice? Is it the top, top, top? Is it everyone can, maybe if you're willing to do the steps that you're willing to go to? I remember I, I saw a uh, lecture by Larry Rosenthal early in my career, and he had a line that he said to his wife, he's like, hey, if I'm going to do this, I really got to go for it, right? I got to put myself fully out there. And that's how I'm going to create myself to be this cosmetic guru or, or, or something like that. For me, sleep, I had a busy dental practice. And to get sleep, and this is not what we teach people, but for me, because there was no path, I had to really walk away from what I was doing. I, I went from working five busy full days to one and leaving the rest up to my associate. I'd work in my office on Mondays from early in the morning till late. And then I'd just be done. And I'd say, you know what? I got to go figure out more of sleep. And I was trying to figure that path out. That took a lot of time and effort. It took me a year and a half, two years to get solid traction. The iOS members, we give them the path now. They need six hours a week, four to six hours a week of time, by the way, on the business. So patient time is extra, but you need to understand this business. You need to be willing to work on it. You need to be willing to build it. And it's different than dentistry because I'll tell you, the very first practice I bought, which was in 1999, the day I opened it was profitable. And that goes for every practice I bought after that. You buy it, you can make money technically that day. If you start from scratch, it takes you some time to build it up. But if you're buying somebody else's practice, you're profitable day one. A sleep practice, you're going to be negative on cash flow for three months, four months. And then it's you've got to be willing to make it through those parts to get to the 20, 30, 40 a month, which is once you're there, kind of goes on autopilot, which is pretty neat. Well, you know, and I think it's really important that you bring that up because, again, you are 
creating literally a new practice. Yeah. And again, that's, that's, that's the kind of like the mindset shift there. You know, much of people are thinking like, well, I took a sleep course. I'm just going to add it on to what I'm doing in dentistry. This is actually a, I mean, it could be a separate business and a very lucrative one. And you have to approach it that way. It takes time to grow any business, just like anyone who starts a startup practice. Some people who are lucky and playing really well, they have a whole bunch of patients day one, but most people, it takes time to build that up. So again, just kind of, kind of, you know, talk about that. Talk about the fact that it's like a separate, it's almost like a separate business here. I, it's not even almost, it's a separate business. Yeah. If you're going to do it the right way, it has to be a separate business. Yeah, I, I found out how to get paid for these properly uh, almost by a fluke. I, I had created what's called a DME company, a durable medical equipment company to do oral appliances. I started billing them to the insurance. The same, by the way, same patient base. I had uh, my office near Johnson & Johnson's headquarters and all their execs came to me and I did an oral appliance on one got paid for it as Abby Weisfogel, the dentist, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1800 bucks from United Healthcare. After I built my separate sleep company, I built the same exact procedure, same exact location, just to, through a new company. And I got paid almost four times as much. I'm like, whoa, this is pretty neat. I, I wonder what happened here. And then all of a sudden you started billing things separately through a properly formed DME company, which is something you have to learn. It's not really taught at courses. They don't teach you how to build a, a company. There's a certain structure and a certain way that this needs to be built in order for it to get paid that way. And you know, we're, we honestly have the whole thing planned out. We're not just forming this so you can get paid. We're forming this so you can sell it at some point too. And that's really how this has to be looked at. If you do it as an additional procedure and it's now in your little list, hey, I'm Dr. Uh, Steve Jones, and here's the list of procedures I do. You've seen dental stock websites galore, right? A big smiling person who's beautiful up there you know, with their happy family and their happy kids. And here's Dr. Jones, here's what we do, right? And if one of those is sleep apnea, it's going to get glanced over, probably won't get paid attention to, and you're certainly not going to do it with any success. If you're doing this where you have a separate sleep business, where that's the focus, and you've set this up the proper way with all the pieces, it becomes way more predictable. And again, dentists love predictable. Yeah, yeah. So so here's the thing, you know, for those who are watching right now, maybe, maybe you're very interested. Maybe you're skeptical. Maybe you're like thinking, okay, this is a bunch of BS and whatever. I tried this before. It didn't work for me. Here's the thing. If for the, if for the off chance, okay, that it does work yeah, and it changes your practice, it changes your whole trajectory. I mean, isn't it worth it there? And so here's the thing. Again, dentists, we want proof and we don't yeah. like taking risks, right? So here's the thing. I mean, I talked to Avi before we jumped on. I said, look, Avi, I mean, there's going to be people who are, who, are, who are not risk takers. And, and you know, most dentists, they want to see the facts. They want to weigh out the pros and cons. What, what can we do? What can we do to where it's like you can get more information? You can ask the man himself or any of the instructors in the organization all the questions you want. You can corner them, ask them all the questions you want, right? I was like, what can we do? It's so obviously like, well, you know what? We got we got some courses. We got we got a big course. That's we got two going courses. On. Yeah, right? you got a big course going on in Vegas. They got we got the yeah. smaller courses where you get more attention and you can ask all those hard questions. And honestly, after that, if you feel like it's not for you, okay. But yeah. just to dismiss it, if you're listening right now and you're like, you're not any interested, you're like, I don't, I don't care. That you're doing a disservice there. So yeah, here's the you thing: gotta, you got to know it, right? Which way, what makes sense? We have those two courses. One is small, as you mentioned, where we have 15 dentists max. And go. we're going to get to know you over that weekend. You know, We're going to get through your questions, your situation, hear your history, tell us what you've done in sleep, if anything, and then go through, hey, does this make sense for you to do? We also give a large course. And the large course, which is coming up in Vegas, it has the best price tag of all. It's free. You know, we want people to come <laughs> and learn and understand. We're always looking for the right people. You know, we have 204 uh, members now of International Academy of Sleep. And those all came from going out, giving courses, meeting people, talking to them, making sure that this made sense for them. You know, I, I we know how hard dentists work for their money and nobody is looking to do anything but do something that makes sense for this. And so this course that's in Vegas 
come learn, come see and see if this makes sense for you. And if it does, great. Then we figure out a plan forward. And if not, well, you know what? You could do worse than a trip to Vegas. You know, there the you go. Pretty freaking phenomenal. The hotels are pretty great. So I mean, fun, there you go. Stuff. You know, you, you write it off, right? Your CPA is going to be happy. You write it off. You went for a course in there. Okay. So Avi, for that free, so that free workshop, what was yes. that in March? It's in March. It's the first weekend in March. If you go to IAOS.com forward slash Vegas, you can we'll sign right up for it. The comment section. Yeah, we'll have it all there. And it, listen, you're going to learn. You're going to learn what you need to do. It's not the same as coming to one of the small courses because at the small course, you really will get some hands-on experience. At the small courses, by the way, you want to talk proof. We do every small course in conjunction with an IAOS member's office. So when we're in Austin, you get to see two offices that are, I mean, superstars in the world of sleep. They have dental practices, they have sleep businesses, and their sleep businesses are crushing it. And you get to see them, their staff, the inner workings, the behind the scenes, and then go to the lecture on top of it. So you really get to see it hands on. So Avi, you know, the you just brought up the Austin course and and I think that that's actually really soon, right? Yeah, here's the thing, guys. 10. So it's, here's the thing, guys. I mean, if if you really want to go to that course in Austin, if you're in Texas, that's a no-brainer. I mean, we, we know in Texas it's easy yeah. to get around in Texas. But if you want to go, Avi, I mean, can I twist your arm right now and, and can you create a spot for these people like last yeah, minute to come in? It's pretty close to fall, but well, you know, this is for the nifty thrifty dancers here. We're gonna get you guys in there. We'll even honestly throw in 25% off for anybody who's watching this now. Come to this course. I mean, you really get to see the most successful sleep businesses in the country. People who do 100 plus appliances every single month, where all they did was implement the system. They learned, they went through the struggles. You know, it's not like it was, all right, I'm in now and everything's easy. It's I went in, went through the struggles, moved past the struggles, created a business that, you know, it's amazing about it, which we haven't even touched on. You know what is not necessary for a sleep business, which is the opposite of dentist? your physical presence. Once you create a sleep business, this is has such a high profit margin. You stick associates in, you can run your business from any well, Hold up, hold up, Avi. Okay, you're gonna, yeah. you're gonna have to- I'm you, blowing your mind, I know it, right? You're gonna have to stop there. So, so again, you know, for the dentist who's been practicing for a while, has been grinding, right? Grinding for years, right? And just, just in the trenches and they're like, you know what? I wanna, I wanna cut back a little bit. You know, my back's kind of hurting, my wrist is kind of hurting. Hey, I wanna go and- catch my kids at the ball game and stuff like that. Maybe I want to cut back days. Are, are you saying that there's another opportunity where you actually could still maintain, if not exceed what you were producing without you actually sitting in the chair? Cra crazy notion, right? So here I was, I told you, I did a lot of full mouth rehab cases and you know the problem with those, you are married to those patients. Oh, yeah. They are your patients for life. Difficult cases, my God, I mean, the amount of blood, sweat, and tears that went into it, and you compared it to, hey, here's what I'm making on a full mouth rehab case. Yes, fulfilling when went right, awful when it goes wrong. I, a couple cases, I'm like, oh boy, I, I wish I could uh, change those cases. But on the other hand, sleep is just a, a simple, easy procedure. Now, why is it that you know we look at dentistry and try to figure if I'm doing dentistry and I bring somebody else in to do dentistry, well, and now I'm giving them a piece of what I do and uh, my margins are so tight to begin with, how am I going to make any profit? Sleep costs, you know, a typical appliance costs you three, 400 bucks and we're getting an average of 3,100 on reimbursement. There's tons of room there for you to just stick an associate in, run the business and the business is the difficult part, running the pieces where you have patient attraction coming in, where you have the correct sales system put in place, where you have the correct process so you get paid every time and you just stick an associate in wherever. When I was building my business, you know, I had a practice in New Jersey and only New Jersey. And I started building in another state specifically just by training an associate to go do this. And each one was very successful without me technically being there. Now, that's not to say I didn't work hard on each one. Each one I built up to get to the point where there would be a consistent, steady stream of patients. And I knew all the players and knew the doctors to set it up that way. But once it was up and running, Hey, I could be running this from the Bahamas uh, for all that for all that mattered. Well, there you go. So, guys, I mean, look, there's two opportunities here, right? You can wait and go to the Vegas course. It's free. OK, so there's no excuses. And again, if you're thinking, well, I don't want to will definitely Vegas. get your money's worth free. You'll, yeah, you'll get your money's worth. And here's the thing. You're like, OK, well, I don't want to waste any time. Well, you're in Vegas, right? Take 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 your wife, take your husband, have a good time, learn something. And if it's for you, that's the cherry on top. 
But for those who are extra motivated, I mean, literally in a few days in Austin, if you're in Texas, it's a no-brainer. But if, you, if you're not in Texas, you want to come here, I just literally twisted Avi's arm and said, hey, look, you need to squeeze up more people. Look, they're, they're pretty much sold out, okay? Come there, he's going to give it 25% off. I think the course is like, what, 1500 bucks? Yeah, I mean, 1495 for dentists, 795 for staff. There you go. He's going to give you your spouse for free, by the way. So there, we'll feed you, you well. There you go. But what's going to be huge here is if you're one of those skeptical dogs that are watching, they're like, ah, I don't know. He's actually, the course is actually in an office of one of the members who does, would you say 100 appliances? Yeah, 100 plus appliances a month. You know, he's been working with us for right around four it, years. It, and is this, 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 is, this, is, this is Brandon Hedgecock's office, I'm assuming, this right? This is Brandon Hedgecock's office, yes. Let me tell you guys something, okay? Sometimes people may say, well, you know, it's just some, some dogs who spit out some BS and stuff. Look, for those who, are, who understand like uh, six month smiles or clear aligners, you guys know who Brandon Hedgecock is. Okay, he's taught those courses. Yep. We know who he is. He is legit. Okay, and again, I'm excited the fact that it's going to be in his office. You can ask him yourself. If you don't want to ask Avi, you can ask him yourself. But again, it's an opportunity there. It's just twist his arm. He's going to open up some spots. You can come if you want to just dive right in. It's this weekend. This weekend. But here's the thing: if it, if it's too short notice, come out to the Vegas thing. You can ride off the. You can ride off the trip. Have a good time. But the cherry on top is if this is something for you, again, it's going to change your, your – not, I'm not going to say your practice. It's going to change your career. So, Avi, before we jump off here, what is the best way? Obviously, we're going to put links, come to the courses. Right. Online, but what's the best way? For those who are like, okay, I'm thinking about – I mean, is the best way just come to the course and Come, be, come be check it out, guys. Person. Really, come check it out. iOS.com forward slash events. You can come check out any of the courses. We're somewhere every month. You know, there's free courses maybe twice a year, but the small courses we have every single month, they're always in conjunction with a member who's crushing it, right? So yeah, we'll go to yeah. different areas where we have successful members so you can see what it's like because everybody's path is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, the foundation's the same. They understand this. They can go ahead and do this. And, you know, regardless of where they move, wanted to move to, they could open up another location there. It's pretty interesting to see how, you know, how this builds. Brandon has, I think, four locations now. He's wow. all of a sudden about to open up in Arkansas, which is obviously outside Texas. And, you know, you, you can see that piece of it for yourself. It's pretty neat to actually see it rather than seeing theory. Ask Brandon, ask the associates yeah. that work for Brandon, ask the assistants that are working from, ask the entire staff that he has there running this business. It's pretty neat to see. I love it. I love it. Avi, thank you so much for jumping on, guys. My pleasure, all Glenn. The links, we have all the links there. And here's the thing, you know, if you if you've gone through, if you've gone through a sleep course and didn't work for you, then you owe it to yourself, right? Don't don't just don't waste your time. Just don't just give up that you're just wasting your time. You owe it to yourself to at least see what Avi and his team are doing over here. You at least owe that to yourself. So again, with that being said, Avi, thank you so much for jumping on, guys. Oh, it's my pleasure. Okay. I really had a blast. Thank see you all for paying attention. I hope to get to see you soon live.